Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shroud. Today we're here to talk about the crazy people in our lives. The crazy people that use more than one GPU and those that also use more than two GPUs. That's right, we're going to compare three-way Crossfire and SLI configurations, but not just any three-way Crossfire SLI configurations. We're gonna look at three AMD Radeon R9 Fury X graphics cards, as well as three NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 Ti cards. Now, uh, if you watched our website recently, you've noticed that we've had in a handful of the Fury X cards uh, originally to test performance, but we also did some uh, sound testing and, and try to keep an eye on what the pump noise actually occurred there. We have that other video in story that we'll link in the description below here. Uh, but obviously we really wanted to look at what two Fury X cards could do in Crossfire and then what maybe you could get with three. And it turns out not that much. Uh, in terms of the 980 Ti, we have our reference card here that is included in our tests. Uh, and we also happen to get in a second and a third GTX 980 Ti card that allow us to do two-way and three-way SLI testing of that. We have our EVGA uh, GTX 980 Ti. This is the SC uh, edition with the ACX 2.0 cooler here. And then we also have the uh, Zotac Arctic Storm 980 Ti, which is massive beast of a card that has an integrated water block on it too. We'll have another review and video on that in the not too distant future. So let's talk about performance here guys because that's really where we're going to focus on for all of these products. Uh, we tested our normal suite of seven games at 2560 by 1440 as well as 4k and as you might expect the 4k results are those that are going to be uh, more receptive to multi-GPU scaling. These are already very powerful cards. They're going to be a $650 retail price or so each uh, in that regard. So be prepared to spend a little bit more on your display to take advantage of that. So uh, we looked at Grand Theft Auto, Crisis 3, Battlefield 4, Bioshock, uh, Grid 2, Metro Last Light, and even Skyrim. Yes, even Skyrim. DX9, very old title, but interesting results nonetheless. Uh, we used the 15.15 .15 beta driver for the AMD cards and I think it was 353.90 or 353.30 for the NVIDIA cards. Um, scaling, uh, surprisingly, let's just talk about two-way SLI and two-way Crossfire configurations first. The results are pretty surprising, I think, for a lot of people. The AMD Fury X actually scales better in two card configuration than the 980 Ti. If you remember back to our review of the Fury X, the 980 Ti was still faster than that card in the majority of our tests. Not all of them, but I'd say 60 to 75% or so. When we go to two card scaling, however, uh, in this case with two Fury Xs and with two 980 Ti's, the results kind of shift. Uh, for example, in uh, if we look at Battlefield 4 as a good example here, uh, we go from the 980 Ti having a pretty dominant win at 70 frames per second versus 61 frames per second. We actually see uh, the, a tie at about 116 frames per second for the Fury X and the 980 Ti, just showing you that the scaling rate of the Fury X is actually above that of the 980 Ti. Uh, at 4K, that happens to at the same kind of result. The Fury X scales by 85% while the 980 Ti scales at 78%. So both of those results are actually very positive. Um, they result in uh, kind of a good value for your dollar if you're adding in a second card. And I found that to be the case in most of our titles. Um, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5 had some issues at 25 by 14, but at 4K we saw anywhere from 50 to 70% scaling with either of those cards. Uh, Bioshock you needed a 4K resolution to really see any benefit of two card scaling. Crisis 3, still clearly a game that demands a lot of GPU horsepower. 79% um, scaling for AMD and 76% scaling for NVIDIA at 25 by 14. And if you look at 4K, we actually got 95% scaling from the AMD Fury X, adding in the second card there, and 85% scaling for adding in another 980 Ti. Still very good, but not as high of a scaling rate as we saw with the, uh, with the Fury X cards. And I should note, uh, in terms of frame pacing and frame timing, um, the Fury X actually did very well in that regard uh, compared to the 980 Ti. In, I would say, more than half of the instances, the AMD Fury X cards running in Crossfire had more consistent frame times than the 980 Ti, indicating that AMD has done a lot of work on the driver side there and maybe a little bit of tweaking on the GPU side to make sure that their multi-GPU scaling is as good as or better than what NVIDIA currently offers with the 980 uh, Ti. So that's something that if NVIDIA still wants to kind of have as a feather in its cap that it's going to need to do a little bit more work on and make sure that it's tightening up everything in the driver. 
Now let's talk about three-way crossfire in SLI. I don't know how to say this any other way, but I would recommend that nobody ever do three-way crossfire or SLI. The scaling rates are range anywhere from minus 4%, which means you actually lose some performance. Uh, in grid two, for example, you have less performance at 25 by 14 using three 980 Ti's or three Fury X cards compared to using two of those. Uh, or you even have several instances of just zero scaling, right? So there's just no benefit at all. Uh, Metro Last Light at 4K, for example, sees no scaling going from two cards to three cards. Part of that is game design, but part of that is just game developers you know, know that this is a niche of a niche market and they don't really want to spend a whole lot of time there. Even games like Battlefield 4 that had terrific two card scaling had mediocre three card scaling, 14% or 21% scaling uh, if, you, if you look at it that way. Now keep in mind that the maximum scaling rate you can get going from two cards to three cards is really 50%, not 100% again, right? Because you're, you're not doubling the amount of cards, you are adding 50% more GPUs to it. So keep that in mind when we talk about these numbers. Um, Grand Theft Auto V, uh, even with the GTX 980 Ti, only saw a 10% increase in frame rate going from two cards to three cards. And if you look at our graphs for frame timing uh, and, and kind of frame rate consistency, that is just completely blown out of the water with three cards. There's, it, is, it is significantly worse on both AMD's platform and NVIDIA's platform when it comes to adding in a third card. Now we didn't have four of either of these GPUs, so we weren't able to go that far, um, but it seems obvious to me that while if you want to invest $1,300 in GPUs for a pair of each of these cards, there's definitely some benefits there if you are gaming on a 4K panel. Don't spend the other $650 and go for a third card unless you just want to be crazy uh, and maybe every once in a while disable the, the SLI or crossfire configuration on that one to save performance and improve your overall gaming experience. The last note I'll mention here is on power consumption. At, at uh, a single GPU, the AMD Fury X used about 20 to 30 watts more power than the 980 Ti. Uh, when we went into two cards, that gap increased to about 100 watts, and we went to three cards, that was about 145 watts difference. So the 980 Ti is definitely a more efficient GPU in terms of power consumption overall, uh, but the Radeon Fury X isn't nearly as far behind in terms of its performance capability, performance per watt, that the R9 290X and the Hawaii GPU used to be. So the uh, Fiji GPU has definitely improved things on that front. So that's kind of our analysis here, guys. If uh, I, This is one of those stories that I really suggest you go to PCPer.com, uh, you look through the benchmarks, you look at the results. We'll have some tables in there to kind of show you um, how uh, a Fury X scaled from one to two GPUs and then how it scaled again up to three GPUs so you can get an idea of what those actual percentages are. But then also make sure you're keeping an eye on the frame time variance. That is just as important, maybe more important than just average frame rate when it comes to multi-GPU configurations. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time.